I never really realized that I've spent the greater part of my life entrenched in aesthetic pursuits. I highly value the realm of artistic expression in all its forms, but it's my opinion, and uh, that doesn't mean a whole lot, that fiction is the most important and powerful art form that we have. Hey everybody, welcome back to It's Too Late to Apologize Book Reviews. I'm Stella, and today I want to do something a little bit different. Today, I want to talk about why I think that fiction is the most important art form that we have. This is something that I've had in my mind for a really long time, and I just sort of sat down and started writing my thoughts about it, so I'm just going to share those with you. Now, it's in no way my intention to disparage other art forms. I respect all art forms and have been involved in many of them. I have my own artwork hanging in my home. At one point, I could play four different instruments. I used to dance and sing in a local cultural group. And I am quite taken with architectural and fashion design. And I used to hold a position as an artistic director for one of the largest hair care companies in the world. And I enjoy reading and writing. All this to say that until recently, I never really realized that I've spent the greater part of my life entrenched in aesthetic pursuits. I highly value the realm of artistic expression in all its forms. But it's my opinion, and uh, that doesn't mean a whole lot, that fiction is the most important and powerful art form that we have. And in part, it's because it has the advantage of being able to play the long game like not many other art forms can. I read almost exclusively fiction. I have a few shelves of nonfiction, but if I had to give it like a percentage of the total, I'd say it's sitting at about 8% of my entire shelf space. No, I don't know about you, but I've encountered over the years some people who are baffled by both the amount of time I dedicate to reading which is kind of hilarious because I read about 40 books a year, which isn't a whole lot for some people. It's a relatively low number compared to others, but it's, it's a good pace for me. I like it. It's a good pace for me considering uh, my other hobbies and my personal life. So it works. But again, these, these people are, are often baffled by the time I dedicate to reading and by the fact that I read almost exclusively fiction. They often wonder, why fiction? I often hear, it's nothing but make-believe. It's a waste of time. You're not learning anything. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Team nonfiction sounds a lot like Scooby-Doo in my head. Let's just call it an aesthetic choice, perhaps. Now, I am not saying for you to stop reading nonfiction. I'm not here to tell anybody what to read and what not to read, as I've said in other videos. I, instead, would always rather talk about the sublime that can be found if one goes looking for it. Nonfiction is not art. And I'm not saying there isn't an art to writing compelling nonfiction, because there is, but nonfiction is not art. So why do we read fiction? The most often given responses are one of two from what I normally hear. Reason number one is it's escapist. You're able to leave your reality and visit and immerse yourself in a different one. And reason number two it allows you to understand other viewpoints, to understand other cultures, histories, and experiences widely different than your own. Now, I'm not saying there can't be more than those two reasons, and if you have another one, leave me it in the comments down below, but those are the usual ones I hear. While we've all heard these reasons or have repeated them ourselves when asked this question, they are also so common they're practically wrote. These are the most common reasons, and they are true. But what often people don't talk about or perhaps find themselves struggling to describe to people who haven't experienced it for themselves is how reading fundamentally changes you in both reasons. First, let's talk about escapism. Whether one is dealing with stress, loneliness, boredom, or even trauma, reading can be a coping mechanism to deal with those things. Now, we don't often perceive coping mechanisms in a positive light. The problem isn't necessarily the tool, but how one uses it. But this coping mechanism has the unique ability to also help us process the emotions one is dealing with. If dealing with stress, one might like to unwind with a lighthearted book. If lonely, 
one may like to read about someone else going through the exact same thing. If you're bored, a tale of adventure and faraway places may help entertain and inspire you. And if dealing with the impact of trauma or loss, books can be the gateway to understanding your triggers or understanding your suffering through a shared experience of pain and sorrow. There is a reason there are so many genres and styles and themes in literature and books. They are all needed in some way. It can be easy to look at an ostensibly silly book like Bridget Jones's Diary or The Princess Bride and see the comedy or satire as a waste of time. But those glimpses into lightheartedness have no doubt helped someone who was looking for some light, understanding, or relief in a dark time in their lives. Books, quite literally, save lives. The universal but isolating space of human suffering that we find ourselves trapped in can seem impossible to comprehend at times. But you can find an understanding of it in great literature. Literature is like an alternative dimension and a time machine where past humanity can reach out into the future, transcending time and space to shake hands with the present and even alter the future. When you can understand the tragedy of another, your own burdens can start to lift. It is in fiction that we must lose ourselves to also find ourselves. And now to the second point of understanding experiences, histories, and cultures widely different than your own. To this, I'd say that if you want to spend your time doing something useful, fiction is one of the most useful things you can read. Reading fiction develops one's theory of mind, which is the ability to see the world from another person's perspective. The people who can't do this struggle with connection and with their social lives and find relationships difficult. Stories and fiction destroy prejudice and hate. They destroy violence and chaos. They destroy loneliness and isolation self-centeredness, and shallow human interactions. They destroy division. And perhaps if you can find empathy for a stranger that doesn't exist, you can also find it for yourself. Honest reflection on the stories of others can open doors to understanding ourselves. The brain is plastic, and this adaptability is the root of psychodynamic therapy. And scientists are only at the beginning of understanding gene expression and how our habits impact it, and how our habits can activate or deactivate parts of our genome in groundbreaking ways. If how I eat and exercise can do this, can impact gene expression, then what is reading doing when we know it changes our brains and is a workout for the mind? Fiction is a symbiotic relationship between the writer and the reader that together creates this art. It is in stories that we practice difficult choices with seemingly real consequences. The brain lights up in the same regions that it would if you were actually doing and experiencing what you are reading about. What you read matters. And this does not happen with fact-based nonfiction. Reading is a workout for your mind. It is the only mind-altering drug I partake in. But beyond all this, fiction or stories are the oldest form of education we have. They are the foundation of learning and are probably as old as language itself, which is about 50,000 to 150,000 years old, you know, give or take a year or two. To engage with literature instead of skimming the surface, this motivated, focused reading is the path to critical thinking and to thinking outside the box. A history book or nonfiction book tells us about one particular situation. It is true, but it can also be filtered and at worst it can be falsified. But what good literature does is it describes how the world of humanity works. It is meta. We are not dealing directly with reality. We are dealing with how someone else deals with reality. And when done well, there is no better way to understand humanity. And when done poorly, we can see the lie for what it is. For it is just as important to be able to spot the delusion as it is to spot the truth. And I find that subjectivity so much more interesting. Nonfiction can be a false representation, posing as the truth to manipulate. But the best fiction is the known lie that tells you the truth. It is an act of artistic construction that leads to reality. Great literature doesn't give answers. Instead, it beseeches the reader to ask the right questions. These questions can impel the reader like almost nothing else it leads to personal truth and to ethics. 
In the Journal of Philosophy, it says, and I quote, aesthetics is the science of like versus dislike. It is the science of values, end quote. And fiction is a manner in which one discovers their personal aesthetics, their personal ethics. Joseph Luzzi, a professor of comparative literature said, and I quote, we are a storytelling species. I think it's just as important as the opposable thumb, end quote. I find it endlessly fascinating to consider what stories have done for our civilization. And that's why I believe fiction is the most important art form we have. But what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have other reasons that you read fiction? Let me know in the comments down below. Please like and subscribe so more people can join in the comments and find some great books. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.